there's something really special about things that glow. And we all like them, they're warm, they're welcoming, and so in this video I'm going to show you how to paint a glowing lamp. I love the glow of gamboge. Mix a little yellow with it to make it less bright of a glow. And this uh, lamp is a circle, and I, I'm going to sort of put it in that circle and let it sit for just a minute so that the circle is there. I let that dry just a little bit, and I've watered my paint down, and I'm going to just let it spread out because it glows. Go right onto the lamppost and everything. I use this for my reference photo. I'm going to make the background indigo so it has some color. I want it quite dark out at the edges. I think I want a bigger brush than that. I'm watering it down as I come in, but not too much. I'm going to form a second circle around that. Getting this a little bit wet here. And I'm going right across the post. Now I'm rinsing my brush pretty well. I'm drying it on the sponge, a little bit on the paper. I'm going to immediately soften this. Hopefully I didn't wait too long. I want this black circle, dark circle, to come in pretty far but not to take over the yellow. So I gotta get my brush really clean. I'm gonna pound it on the bottom a little bit. And then when we're done with this, we'll work our way back out. So your brush picks up paint pretty quickly and then you have to go through the whole cleaning it again in order to get these soft edges on the inside. And now I'm putting a little bit of yellow into my brush. And I'm going to go out with this yellow. That's kind of cool, making that star look, but I don't want it to come in too far. It's gone about as far as I want it to go, and it's still very wet, so it's going to go further. So I'm going to Put a stop to it, as cool as it is. Lines, and I think what I'm going to do is, as those lines are starting to go in there and looking cool, is I'm going to just dry it right away before they can spread too far. As soon as I finished that, of course, I noticed that I want my horizon line to be lower. One thing, I don't want it right smack in the middle of everything. Now I'm just agitating in here a little bit where that post comes down. And I'm going to lift a little because there's sort of a reflection that happens when the light hits the snow. And that's in a few places. So we're just going to lift little bits here and there. I'm going to put these big brushes away and get out my favorite new brush. This is a Adelier Squirrel Blend. And it comes to a great point. And for this, I'm not going to use the indigo, but I'm going to use a black, Payne's Gray. I'm going to water this down some because it's, it's not all the way black up here. Water it down some more. As it goes up, it gets lighter. So it's the glare. I'm 
and then almost clean the brush for this last little part. Now back to the indigo. There's a little pocket in the snow here beside this post. And there's this little bit of a pile of snow. And the front needs to be light, so we'll soften it towards the back. But I'm just going to go for the bottom because the bottom is black. I'm putting the main branches on. And you can do this with a you can do it really quick like this with a brush and not stress about it being neat. Or you can use a quill pen or a marker. If you like this video, would you please subscribe and like and maybe share it with a friend? And of course, I always love to hear from you, so a note would be great. And now comes the really fun part. Now, one of the things that this painting has is shadows, and they're quite intense shadows under this bench, and I'll do that for the tree, but I want to wait until last. You want to make sure your brush is completely, completely clean before you use it in bleed proof white. I'm getting a pretty big pile of it on my palette. And then over here I'm going to make some gray. And as this tree comes up, it's going to get a little bit grayer. All the supplies that you need for this project can be found in the comments. And the part facing the light is going to be white, completely white, into your painting. And then as you go down, a little bit grayer. So some of these down here will have a little bit of light showing, but not quite as white as up above. And now I'm going in with this gray again. And we're going to get some of these branches and they're going to start out gray at the side. And as they go out, they'll become almost black because just because I don't want them taking your eye off the page. You can use either a finer brush than this or a pen tip to put some of these really fine branches on. Depends how detailed you want to get. If you want to get it done and not have to do all this fussing. But not everybody does. And everybody should do what they enjoy as a watercolorist. Make it your own. And then as these get in towards the light, we start to get whiter. I'm just going to rinse my brush a little bit and in here where it switches color into the darker gray, just soften that edge and it'll blend in. That's the cool thing about bleed proof white, you can blend it in just like you can paint. Now this goes behind the lamp post. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do that with Buy Me a Cup. The link to that is in the comments. Kind of an upward trend in the photo. I really wanted to get in here a little bit because it makes the tree look more free. I 
can really make the shadows indigo. how that got pink there but it got a little pink there. Now for those of you that love pink you can make a pink glow for your light. You can do whatever you want for that light. It doesn't have to be yellow and it could be a monochromatic like this uh, uh, photo reference and just be black and white. And there's also a general shadow under the lamppost. We'll make another shadow over here from something. We don't know what. And now for the fun part, the snow. Not that it wasn't all fun, but for the snow, I'm going to use one of my stencil brushes. Now, for something like a stencil brush, I always practice. And, well, for any any time I do splatters, I practice, and it tells me if I have my my uh, paint thick enough, or my bleed proof white thick enough, whichever it is. Okay, I'm ready to go. That I wasn't ready for. I even practiced. So my sponge was too wet deep down, is why that happened. So I'm really drying it now. Okay, so now just the ends should be wet on this. I just love what snow does to paintings like this. Every time you reload it, practice it again. I want it to look like it's really snowing. I thought this painting was all finished and I was ready to put it in a mat. And then when I looked at it again, it just looked so stiff. And so I'm going to do a couple of things to loosen it up. The first thing is going to be around this glow. Is that I'm going to just lift some of the blue. So that the glow goes in a bigger circle instead of this tight little circle. Next, I'm gonna get some watered down yellow with a little bit of a Cambodge in it, so it's not quite. And I'm gonna go out, and I'm even gonna let it turn green as it hits the blue, just to let it be a bigger circle. I'm just letting the water, the paint run out. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spritz this tree. I'm just going to let that soften up a little bit at the bottom. And it'll spread a little, but because it's dried for days now, it won't be too much. But that just made it look a little bit softer and a little bit more relaxed. And while it's wet, I'm going to go in with a little bit of Payne's Gray and let some, let some running happen. If there's more branches back there that we can't see, and so I'm going to fill in a little bit so that it's not just this wound up little tight tree. Now I've gotten it completely dry and I'm going to spritz some more. And like always, practice right after I load my brush. And I want to spritz quite a bit more right around the lamp because the light on the snow would show more around a lamp and then the tree just lost its spritzes. And I'm hoping that this extra spritzes around the lamp will also extend that glow. 